Hi, good morning, friends. I am just going to demonstrate to you uh, in this short video the concept of hemoglobin electrophoresis that we do in a patient who is suffering from sickle cell disease. We just have a brief recap about the problem in a patient having sickle cell disease. Now, as most of us understand that sickle cell disease is a condition which is caused because of a point mutation. And what we find in sickle cell disease because of this point mutation is that there is a change in the beta chain of the hemoglobin, particularly at the sixth position. Now, in a normal individual, we understand that at the sixth position of the beta globin chain, we are having the presence of glutamic acid. However, because of the point mutation, what you find is that the glutamic acid at the sixth position of the beta chain is going to be replaced by a new amino acid which happens to be valine. Which means that if I talk about the representation of the beta globin chain in a normal individual, that is going to be represented as something like this, just plain beta. Whereas in case of a patient who is suffering from sickle cell disease, this particular beta globin chain is going to be abnormal and that is what is going to be represented as a beta S chain. Now this is a simple fact which most of us can remember easily with the help of an acronym. We say glutamic acid in a patient having sickle cell anemia or sickle cell disease goes and the replacement of this glutamic acid, this is being replaced by valine. So we are welcoming valine in a patient suffering from sickle cell disease. Now apart from this particular thing, the next important thing we need to understand is what is the significance of the change of this amino acid? Just understand and correlate with the knowledge of biochemistry. Glutamic acid is an example of a polar amino acid. This particular amino acid is having a negative charge. Whereas if we talk about valine, valine is an example of a neutral amino acid. It is non-polar. So practically what is going to be seen in a patient who is suffering from sickle cell disease is that the negative or the polar hemoglobin is going to get converted into somewhat less polar or more neutral hemoglobin. Most of us understand that in a normal individual, the hemoglobin that is present predominantly in the adult happens to be hemoglobin A. So I can say simply that hemoglobin A happens to be a polar hemoglobin, it is having a negative charge. However, if I talk about a patient suffering from sickle cell disease, this patient is going to be represented with hemoglobin S. And hemoglobin S in comparison to hemoglobin A is going to be relatively neutral. The same concept of the change in the charge of the amino acid resulting in a change in the charge of the hemoglobin is what we exploit as and when we perform an investigation. And that is what we intend to discuss in this particular video, hemoglobin electrophoresis. Now how exactly do we perform hemoglobin electrophoresis? We are going to be taking a nitrocellulose strip of paper. And what we do in this particular strip is, over here as we understand that we are going to make a representation as of the poles, the negative and the positive charge. The negative charge is what is going to be referred as cathode and the positive pole is what is going to be referred as anode. Just recap what we talked about just now. In the comparison of hemoglobin A and hemoglobin S, we discussed hemoglobin A happens to be more negative because of the presence of glutamic acid, whereas hemoglobin S happens to be neutral. So when I have to perform hemoglobin electrophoresis, what I do is I place the sample somewhere over here. Let's say sample number 1 and sample number 2, which in this case is representative of hemoglobin A and hemoglobin S respectively. Hemoglobin S is having a negative charge. So when I place the sample at tray number 1 or point number 1, this negative charge hemoglobin is going to get be getting attracted to the positive charge. Therefore, it is going to be having a faster migration. And therefore, what we find is in the electrophoresis, there is going to be formation of a band like this. So this particular band is what I associate with hemoglobin A, the normal hemoglobin that you and me have. However, if my patient is suffering from sickle cell disease, this amino acid is this particular hemoglobin is going to be neutral. And therefore, it is not going to be that strongly attracted towards the positive charge. Therefore, what I find over here is 
that hemoglobin S is going to be having a band which is going to be produced at a slightly lower level. The same concept was what was asked by the people in the AIMS exam, November 2010, when they asked you or they expected you to answer the concept of hemoglobin electrophoresis. If you remember this concept that we are having a change of a polar amino acid into a neutral amino acid, most of you can crack that question easily. Just so that we do not have to remember this kind of an information in a cumbersome way, an easy way to remember this information is, hemoglobin A is having, as you see in the diagram, a faster migration towards a positive charge or the anode. So as you find, hemoglobin A is going to be attracted towards the anode. Whereas if I compare this with hemoglobin S, this is having a relatively slower migration. So what you can remember over here is, hemoglobin S is going to be having a slow movement towards the anode. Therefore, remembering a fact that there is a change in the amino acid because of a point mutation will not only help us to understand the reason for the formation of the abnormal hemoglobin, it also helps us to make a diagnosis of these patients by the special technique called as hemoglobin electrophoresis. Please also do remember the concept that at times they are asking you a question. Though this is a very good investigation for making a diagnosis of sickle cell disease, but as of now, what we do is that we detect the presence of the abnormal beta globin chain. This obviously is an example of a protein and the proteins can be detected with the help of not only the hemoglobin electrophoresis, we can detect them with the help of a technique or investigation called as high performance liquid chromatography. Therefore, why I am stressing on this particular point is, if like any question in the exam asks you about the best modality for making a diagnosis of sickle cell disease, that is always and always to be answered as HPLC with the help of which you are going to be detecting the abnormal beta globin chain. I hope this video would help most of you to have a better understanding of the concept of electrophoresis and HPLC in sickle cell disease. We will catch up with you in more videos sometime later. Thank you so much.